The movie begins with a sequence of images of a severely damaged elevator. Blood is splattered across the walls, and an individual is seen etching tiny stick figure drawings that are stuck inside the elevator. These haunting images foreshadow events to come, and as the ominous atmosphere builds, the scene transitions to security footage, which reveals the date as February 13th at 7.30pm. It seems that everyone has left for the day, except for our central character, Jennifer. In a dimly lit office, she composes an email to her ex, Derek, informing him of her intention to fly to New York and proposing a meeting to talk. We then shift our focus to another character, Guy. He enters a bathroom and begins to make preparations to leave the building. Brief glimpses of his actions are intercut with Jennifer doing the same, as both of them find themselves waiting for the elevator on different floors. Once Jennifer enters the elevator, Guy boards a few floors below, and the two engage in some awkward small talk about the impending Valentine's and President's Day weekend. During their conversation, Guy gestures toward the stick figure drawings trapped within the elevator. As the elevator descends past the initial basement parking floor, a sudden thud halts its progress. Startled, both Jennifer and Guy instinctively press the call and alarm buttons, but neither yields any response. In a desperate attempt to catch the attention of a security guard, they wave towards the surveillance camera, only to discover that there's no one at the security desk. Their predicament is taking a turn for the worse. While they await assistance, Guy initiates a conversation, revealing that he's a recent addition to the accounting department within one of the building's firms. After 15 minutes of increasing anxiety, their cries for help go unanswered. Jennifer even clambers onto Guy's shoulders in search of a hatch on the ceiling, but her efforts yield no results. An agonizing hour passes, and the two passengers forge a bond through dialogues reminiscent of an unfunny romantic comedy. They exchange names in what they humorously refer to as snacks, Guy offers water, and Jennifer provides Hershey's kisses. As the clock strikes 11.45pm, marking four long hours since they boarded the elevator, Jennifer faces a crisis, the pressing need to relieve herself. After some convincing from Guy, she resorts to using her empty thermos as a makeshift restroom. Following the elevator incident, Jennifer reaches into her bag to retrieve a corkscrew, a handy tool she keeps with her, and playfully carves a stick figure woman into the stick figure man picture. As more time elapses, their bond continues to strengthen. During their conversations, Jennifer reveals that her missed flight was an impromptu decision to see Derek, who may not have been as eager to see her. Moved by Jennifer's predicament, Guy decides to open a bottle of wine he had been saving for a client, and the two share a drink. As the clock strikes 1 a.m., they find themselves drawing portraits of each other. It's in this moment that Guy decides to make a heartfelt admission. He confesses that when he claimed earlier not to have seen her before, he was, in fact, being untruthful. He admits to having noticed her in the lobby on several occasions and even confesses to having a little crush on her. He explains that he refrained from mentioning it earlier to avoid coming across as a stalker. Jennifer seems charmed by his admission and shares a hearty laugh with him. With their portraits complete, they exchange drawings, and Jennifer humorously presents Guy as a devilish lobster creature, leading to more laughter. Guy quips that she's captured a side of him that no one has ever seen before. As they rack their brains for conversation topics, Jennifer and Guy settle on discussing romantic encounters, a choice Jennifer deems worthy of recording. She retrieves her phone, and they take turns recounting their most daring lovemaking locations. Jennifer shares a story from her college days, while Guy, not having a story of his own, reluctantly invents a tale about a past encounter with an old work colleague during a picnic. However, as he delves into the fictional account, he becomes unexpectedly aroused and offers an apology for his unexpected reaction. Jennifer reassures him that there's no need to apologize, and their closeness leads to a passionate kiss, igniting a romantic spark. Afterward, Guy opens up with a somewhat impulsive declaration expressing that he could see himself falling in love with her. Unfortunately, his words abruptly kill the romantic atmosphere, leaving Jennifer to clarify that this encounter was just a fantasy, shattering Guy's hopes and leaving him heartbroken. In the midst of their conversation, Guy's demeanor takes a menacing turn, and he insists on being honest with Jennifer. He confesses that he is not actually new to the building, he's not an accountant, and the name he's been using isn't even Guy's real name. The revelation leaves Jennifer in shock, as she grapples with the sudden and unsettling truth. It turns out that Guy has been stalking Jennifer for quite some time and is, in fact, the front desk security guard. He confronts Jennifer, revealing a collection of pictures he's taken over the last several hundred days from the security footage, including images of her waiting for the elevator earlier. This stranger Guy completely loses his composure and begins yelling and pounding on the elevator, venting his frustration over being rejected. He then discloses that he possesses the elevator key, 
and offers to let Jennifer leave. As the elevator begins to ascend, Jennifer, understandably furious, declares her intention to call the police. Unfortunately, this is not the wisest move at the moment. Guy asserts that he won't allow that to happen and deactivates the elevator, leaving the key in the lock. Jennifer makes a break for the key, and Guy attempts to restrain her. In the struggle, as she kicks out, she accidentally shatters the key. Fueled by rage, Jennifer unleashes her fury, overpowering Guy and using her shoe as an improvised weapon, striking him in the head, which results in a deep gash and renders him unconscious. Concerned for his well-being, she goes to check on him. In a sudden and startling turn of events, Guy awakens with a scream, seizes Jennifer's head, and forcefully slams it onto the floor, causing her to lose consciousness. Guy also falls unconscious once again. After a period of unconsciousness, Jennifer regains consciousness, and Guy attempts to explain his actions by claiming he orchestrated the situation so he could get to know her without any distractions. Jennifer, however, doesn't buy his explanation, emphasizing that being trapped in an elevator in the middle of the night is a substantial distraction in itself. Jennifer reiterates her determination to expose Guy for his actions when the next security guard arrives. Shockingly, Guy reveals that he switched shifts with all the other security guards on duty for the weekend meaning no one will discover them until Tuesday. He then ominously mentions that he'd rather resort to harming Jennifer than return to prison. Jennifer denounces him as a monster, highlighting the undeniable fact that he has kidnapped her. Guy becomes increasingly agitated. In a disturbing turn of events, Guy begins to taunt Jennifer and seizes the gift she had intended to give to Derek. He forces her to open the other gift, which turns out to be a cigar set containing a lighter, and a pair of sharp cigar scissors. Guy continues to exhibit unsettling behavior, smoking and tormenting Jennifer. The scene transitions to a later moment when Guy unexpectedly shifts to apologizing to Jennifer and asking for another chance, yet his demeanor remains menacing. Subsequently, Guy takes the pee-filled thermos and forcefully smashes it against the light panels, irritated that they aren't functioning. This leads him to realize that the light bulbs require replacement from the outside and that the ceiling panels can be pried open. Utilizing the pee-filled thermos, he clambers up and strikes a ceiling panel, causing it to loosen and give way. Guy instructs Jennifer to boost him up, but she displays her shrewdness, suggesting it would be easier for her to assist him in this manner. She assures him that she'll comply with his wishes and seek help once she's free. Guy falls for her ploy, and as soon as Jennifer is out of the elevator, she cheekily flips him the finger, revealing her deception. She approaches one of the elevator doors but finds herself unable to open it before Guy catches up to her. Faced with no alternative, he lunges toward her, grabbing her and causing them both to crash back through the elevator ceiling, rendering them unconscious. Sometime later, Jennifer regains consciousness before Guy and notices a concealed fire sprinkler hidden behind a ceiling panel. Jennifer seizes the opportunity to set a fire using the paper from the portrait and the lighter from the cigar box, hoping the smoke will trigger the fire alarm. Guy awakens, for an attempt to attack Jennifer. Guy lunges at her, but she counters by delivering a forceful kick directly to his face, causing his nose to break. Jennifer quickly retrieves her blazer and Guy's shirt, using them to restrain and tie him up. Guy dismisses her efforts just as the sprinkler system activates. Guy asks Jennifer what's the plan at which point Jennifer uses the cigar scissors to unbutton Guy's pants with the intention of incapacitating him. However, instead of carrying out the threat, Jennifer refrains and weeps as Guy expresses gratitude for not carrying out the act. She then decides to record his confession, reasoning that she doesn't want the incident to devolve into a he-said, she-said scenario. This choice records the confession. It's revealed that it's now Sunday, and Guy's true name is John Deacons. The narrative flashes back, providing additional context, including John's manipulation of the elevator and his pointing out the Stickman drawing as a distraction. In his confession, John admits that the story about the romantic encounter with the work colleague from earlier was indeed true. He reveals that he was a successful executive vice president of a company, until a tragic incident at a work picnic. After leaving with the woman, he was involved in a car crash that resulted in her death. Following six months in jail, the only job he could secure was as a security guard in the building. Hearing his story, Jennifer stops recording because she starts to feel sympathy for him. Sometime later, it's now 1 a.m. on Monday when one of the security guards, Eddie, arrives at the building with his girlfriend, intending to sneak her up to the roof. Eddie calls out for John but receives no response. Upon checking the security cameras, he spots John and Jennifer. Eddie uses the telecom to call the elevator, prompting Jennifer to wake up and plead for help, although she neglects to mention that John is responsible for her predicament. Eddie rushes downstairs and uses a crowbar to pry open the elevator door. 
John awakens, unties himself, and shoves Jennifer out of the way before Eddie can fully grasp the situation. John informs Eddie of his presence in the elevator, and Eddie hands him his key to override it. However, John deceives Eddie by claiming that the key is not working, prompting Eddie to climb up to help. Just as Eddie is about to enter the elevator, John suddenly turns the key, pinning Eddie down and allowing the elevator to tragically sever him in half. Jennifer's scream is cut short as John knocks her unconscious. The scene transitions to John carrying an unconscious Jennifer and placing her in the trunk of his car. He then proceeds to clean up the area, disposing of Eddie's dismembered body down the elevator shaft, cleansing the blood from himself, changing his clothes, and erasing all files from the computer. Eddie's girlfriend spots John and inquire about Eddie, leading to John's decision to eliminate her as well. Her lifeless body joins Eddie's down the elevator shaft. John then drives to an alley and pours gasoline into a dumpster with the intention of disposing of Jennifer. Just before opening the trunk, he apologizes to her and expresses the desire for an alternate life where they could be together. As he opens the trunk, it appears that Jennifer is lifeless. Believing she's dead, he nonchalantly throws her purse into the dumpster. Unbeknownst to John, Jennifer is very much alive. She ambushes him from behind, knocks him down with a gas can, and takes control of the car. Reversing the vehicle towards John, she crashes into the dumpster, leaving him badly injured and immobile. Unable to escape, John is defenseless as Jennifer tosses a lit cigar into the dumpster, burning him alive. And that's the end of the story. I hope you liked it. Comment down below what movies do you like us to recap next. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time.